Okay, good morning folks, I'm Dan. Today we're going to start our little series on laying out ribs with the um, with our coordinate system that's given to us by Xena. We're sitting here at my drafting table. This is kind of an experiment here. I've got camera mounted overhead so we've got a good view of the drawing board. And then I've got my other little camera mounted here. So we'll see what works well for the for the videos. Um, it's my little drafting table. This is my smaller drafting table. I've got a piece of Valium already set up on it that I'm drawing on. Um, that's what I recommend you use is a Valium, which is a, it's almost like a Mylar material. It's slick on one side and it's got a grid posted on it. Let's see if we've got something here that you can see the, uh, the grids on it. And uh, one side's slick, one side's kind of a mat. You want your mat side up, that's what you draw on. The reason I choose this is it's stable. You know, it's not like paper that you've run through either a printer or um, you've just drawn on your on your standard paper because what happens is when you, if you use a spray adhesive to put it onto your blocks that you're going to use for form blocks or whatever you're going to adhere this to, there's a potential for that to stretch and your dimensions to change. So I like this Mylar. It's a little bit more expensive than paper, of course, but you know and big picture of things it's not a not a major expense so anyway that's what I recommend you do I've got my standard drawing stuff what I'm gonna do to lay these out we're gonna do a nose rib and we'll do a nose rib from start to finish normally I would use a drafting pencil on this because I can see for the video purposes I'm gonna to go to Sharpies and um, which is not the proper thing really because it's uh, it leaves a bigger line I'll use these for my layout lines and then I'm just gonna use a standard black Sharpie to um, draw our draw our actual points on just because it's easier to see on the on the video so what we're going to do is we'll just go in we've got lots of room here for a nose rib um, I'm just laying out a horizontal and a vertical surface and I'm going to match it up to the lines that are already here and what we've got is our X and Y coordinates these of course will be our X coordinates here Y will be our vertical coordinates and if we lay it out according to Zenus layout marks here for a nose rib. This is our X and Y points for all intents and purposes. This is our zero mark. Our first point is, um, well, let's mark it out. This is X and this is Y. Go off our coordinates. X is at the zero plane. Y is going to be at 208. So we're just going to go up our 208 millimeters. Let's see what ruler we're going to have that's going to best lay this out and these coordinates are actually going to be off a little bit just because I'm using such a heavy marker 208 is the top of our rib second one is 30 across the X it's going to be there and up is going to be going to be 60 and 203 and the easy way to do it of course to go this way to line up here Thank you. 
90. And there's our coordinates laid out. I don't know how well those are going to show up. I guess we can see those all through that. Okay. Now that's the actual layout for our um, for the coordinates for the outline of that rib. Now the front runs on a on an arc and it's based off of circles and stuff. But anyway, here's our first. There's going to be the end point there. We've got a tooling hole, an eighth-inch tooling hole up here. It's 190 millimeters off of X, and it's up 32 millimeters. So if we go over 190, <clears throat> let's change this to a blue sharpie so it's a little bit easier to differentiate. We're going to come over 190. Come up 32. Okay, so that's the one eighth inch tooling hole. Radius is 53 millimeters. So let's set up a 53 millimeters on our and that position is 75. which is at this position right here, which we've already marked as one of our coordinate systems. And it's going to be 53 millimeters up, and we know that because that's what our radius is, and it meets on the bottom of this. It meets at the bottom of the rib. So if we come up 53... And that's our nose rib radius right there. So if we mark that radius, and we'll use a blue. Hopefully that's dark enough we can see it there. Now that radius will come up contour into our into our outline. Now see if we lay out the outline for this right here, and we'll do it. We'll mark them in black. We've used the bottom line of our layout there. We've used the upright here. form your radius. Sometimes you may need to get a little bit of help to do this. This is about when I would yell for my wife or my son. And we just mark out our coordinates. Let's see if we can get this formed enough to...
So there, for all intents and purposes, you have a nose rib. Now we can, we can make it more complicated and we can say that's not accurate enough. But the reality is we've covered those points. And when we go to sand this first form, all we have to do is transition those, those points. We're going to leave it a little bit proud anyway. All we've got to do is transition those points into a nice smooth radius. And I do that on my oscillating belt sander. Um, and that will give you your nose rib. So there's the outline of your nose rib. That's all you have to do to, to generate that form for the nose rib. And it works for all the ribs the same way. Now we do have one other thing we want to lay out in here, which is our uh, flanged hole. It takes 115 millimeter flange in there. And we might as well lay that out. You want to lay that out now anyway. So we are 115 or 100 millimeters over from this edge and it's going to be up 90 millimeters. So if we come out 100, which is that one right there, and we come up 90, So we've got uh, 57 and a half. And this for me is going to be a reference only basically because even though I'm going to mark out the whole flange what I'm going to do is that's probably going to be a quarter inch tooling hole right in the middle. A couple of reasons for that. One is I will use that quarter inch hole and this eighth inch tooling hole to align my blanks in my cutting template. I won't drill that whole hole there's or form that hole until after the rib is cut out and formed. There's several ways you can do your cutting templates or cut things like your flanging holes and your lightning holes. You can go in with a hole saw and cut them out. You can set them up in a router template and route them out, which I actually do like doing, but I've gotten away from that because I think you're better off to just use a quarter inch hole there as tooling holes on these parts. And it varies from part to part, but on things like wing ribs, both the main wing and the and the back section of the or the nose rib and the back section of the rib is if you just use that as a quarter inch hole you've got uh, in the back portions of the ribs you've got three holes three of these holes you can use as tooling holes to bolt your halves together for forming these flanges and then go back and either cut them with a fly cutter hole cutter or they can be set up in a router template you can build another router template specifically for it to cut those out although I won't go to that much trouble. Chances are I'm going to go back and fly cut these probably. But anyway, for a nose rib, we've got an eighth inch tooling hole right here that we're going to use to align it on. And then we're going to uh, use that quarter inch hole to sandwich our two halves of our form blocks together and for our, our cutting templates. Anyway, this is all the information that you need. Well, yes, this actually is all the information you need on these form blocks. Now there's going to be a couple more measurements doing this way. I'm considering this a master template, just like I talked about in, in the uh, video that I did on, on a little Builder Basics, the previous Builder Basics that I did when we got discussing uh, CAD or CAM. So what's going to happen is I'm going to use that 8th inch tooling hole and I'm going to use that hole. We're going to use that as a master form block. And everything else for nose ribs is going to get formed off of here. Um, the things that we will add to these if we're building a cutting template and usually if I just got to build one or two pieces like two an end rib on a stabilizer or something like that where there's one left and one right I'm not going to build a cutting template that's kind of a waste of time I'm better off to cut two of those manually make sure they both match and then form one left and one right but if we're doing things like nose ribs and uh, the rest of the wing ribs um, anything where there's more than two or three identical parts. I'm going to build a router template for it. So everything is going to be based off of this master including the the router template even though this is not two dimensional the router te template. We're going to have a um, 
17 millimeter flange on the bottom on the back we're going to have a 17 millimeter flange on the bottom we're going to have a 17 millimeter flange around the the upper curvature and then this is going to blend together and match to give us a three millimeter flange around the sharpness of the nose and these when we get to that point I'll explain my theory on that but I will tend to leave a little more material here the downside to that is when you leave extra material here you have to trim it back either right before you form it or as you form it when you figure out how much you want to bend and, and gives you the proper radius or the proper rollover that you want on these noses because there's no rivets here but you still use these to support the the skins a little bit you just don't want a sharp edge going up against your skin the problem is if you leave too much material and try and form it over while you're going to crack it you're trying to move too much material into too small a radius and you'll get cracking out there the place that it's the most evident on this that i found on the 701 anyway is the top rib on the um on the vertical fin in the back that's a very small radius around there and I did a video on on forming one of those up I'll link that up there in the in a card someplace um, so if you're interested you can go back and watch that but if you get too much material especially in that little bitty rib that only that has to radius around in probably a two inch two and a half inch um, radius on the end if you've got too much material there even more than three millimeters or even even that three millimeters it's really hard to form it without cracking so what you do is you trim that material back so you've got the minimum you, you've got to have just the right amount of material that you can form over and it makes a nice radius and forms up well but you don't want too much material because it'll get in the way um, the other things to watch for is when these transition from your flanges that you rivet to down into the smaller radius it it radius is down in I tend to now leave a little more material there because usually you've got one rivet here and one rivet here for instance where that material is starting to narrow down and unless you're very careful and make sure you have enough material there why you don't have enough edge distance to get that last rivet in there so that's a concern you want to be made aware of all right I've laid out two other reference lines that I didn't show me laying out uh, one of them's 170 millimeter reference line from our zero point out to our 170 millimeter this is where our 17 millimeter flange will transition on the bottom and go around the nose rib and it'll transition down into our three millimeter rib same way with the top we've got 210 millimeters here at this point where our 17 millimeter ends that's where it will transition on down so we'll uh, we'll cover how that comes into play and how I deal with that to show where those are on the next video but so if you find these videos helpful, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and give me a thumbs up if you like them. And in the comment section below, leave them for me and we can we can discuss this. So anyway, you you CAD guys out there, let's see, you know, let's see if you're going to keep up. Anyway, thanks for taking the time to watch.